Commissioner Jenkins, you, you were a Democrat, and then you were a Republican, and then you were a Democrat again, and then about five years ago, you became a Republican again. So how do you convince these people who've come tonight and the other Republicans in West Virginia that if there is a blue wave come November and the tide turns again, that you won't flip again? I am a proud Republican. I'm a proud West Virginia. I've always put my West Virginia values first. You know, Barack Obama devastated our state and our country. He put literally thousands of coal miners out of work. Look at the Democratic platform, supports abortion on demand, gun grabbers limiting our Second Amendment. You know, the West Virginia story is we are a proud red state. Look, in the Republican primary, Donald Trump won West Virginia by 77 points. He won the general by 44 points. Yeah, Donald Trump was a Democrat. Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. It's the people who follow their values and put their values first rather than their party registration. I simply couldn't be a part of a Democratic Party that was so wrong for West Virginia, so wrong for who we are and what we believe. I will always stand up for our state. I will always stand up for our values. So standing up with this president for what we believe, that's an easy choice for me. That's something I'll always do. So what would you say to the charge that you're too similar, that you're just another Joe Manchin with a little less experience. I welcome the opportunity to face Joe Manchin in the November primary. I voted to cut the taxes and put more money in people's pockets. Joe Manchin voted no. I voted to defund Planned Parenthood. Joe Manchin voted to fund Planned Parenthood. I voted to reduce the regulations bringing our West Virginia jobs back. Joe Manchin is on the Chuck Schumer team. He's sitting there with Elizabeth Warren with Bernie Sanders. He's got a 70, 80 percent voting record with them. That's not West Virginia. I welcome the opportunity to take on Joe Manchin this November and replace him and bring a much needed Republican vote to the United States Senate. Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison, you're running, you're running as an insurgent Republican, a political outsider, but you worked on Capitol Hill and as a big money lobbyist in D.C. So how are you not a creature of the swamp? Well, I think it's very clear of all the candidates on the stage, I'm actually the only one with a conservative record of results. And when so many people here on the stage either abandoned the state or they were on the Barack Obama team, I was literally by myself suing Barack Obama because he threatened our way of life here in West Virginia. He came after our coal jobs. I was the only one to stand up. I fought against Barack Obama. We took him all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. We beat him five to four. That was not an easy thing to do. We built a 27-state coalition to do that. We went after Obama's illegal amnesty. These guys were inactive in all these fights. When West Virginia needed a proven conservative fighter to change the abortion laws in our state, neither of these guys were around. They wouldn't weigh in at the time. I stood up, and now we have a pain-capable law protecting the unborn. That's why West Virginians for Life has endorsed my candidacy. That's why the conservatives have gotten behind me. They know we have a strong conservative record. And we've gone after Washington a lot harder than these guys ever could. You've got to put large conservative coalitions together. That's what I've done. These coalitions would look like Hillary and Pelosi and Kerry. That's not the change we need. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. Well, the opioid epidemic has hit the country hard and nowhere harder than here in West Virginia. Here's Rick Leventhal. Police! It's hard to find anyone who hasn't been touched in some way by the opioid epidemic, killing more Americans every year than car crashes and guns. In 2016, U.S. government statistics show more than 63,000 Americans died from drug overdoses, more than 42,000 of them from opioids. By comparison, roughly 37,000 died in car crashes, 38,000 from gunshots. West Virginia is an unfortunate leader in the opioid crisis with the highest drug overdose rate in the nation, 52 deaths per every 100,000 residents, beating the next closest state by more than 20 percent, doubling the national average. Last December, the governor called in the National Guard for logistical support and trying to help tackle the epidemic. 
Last year was the state's worst, with roughly 1,000 people dying from opiate ODs, far surpassing the 884 lives lost in 2016, part of a steady rise of fatalities in West Virginia since the start of this century. One reason for West Virginia's issues is the easy availability of the pills. Between 2007 and 2012, drug wholesalers shipped 780 million hydrocodone and oxycodone pills into the state, which economists estimate cost West Virginia nearly a billion dollars in lost productivity and resources to address the issue. Congressman Jenkins, you have been representing Southern West Virginia for 24 years. Small towns like Kermit and Williamson, both in your district, have been flooded with enough hydrocodone and oxycodone to supply thousands of pills to every man, woman, and child. So what makes you believe that you deserve a promotion when the district that you represent is ground zero for the opioid crisis? Well, we've been making a real difference, and we are seeing progress. We have here two ladies. They called me five years ago, Sarah and Rhonda, two nurses that saw these precious newborn babies that had been drug exposed during pregnancy. And through a labor of love, Rhonda, Sarah, me, and some others started Lily's Place, a facility that Melania Trump actually came and visited, giving every child a healthy start in life. And what I really like about that piece is they're talking about the flood of opioids. Patrick Morsey and his family lobbying firm in Washington, D.C., Cardinal Health, Cardinal, it's not our state bird, it's the pusher of all these pills, he and his family lobbying firm have made millions and millions in his 18 years as a D.C. lobbyist and Hill staffer. They have flooded our state with these pain pills that have devastated people in West Virginia. If you want to see what the problem is, it is the pill pushers. And Patrick Morsey has represented those people for years and made millions. Our first bell of the evening, but Mr. Morrissey? Well, there Evan goes yet again. He's lies just keeping out. Did your mom ever tell you that we should wash your mouth out with soap with those lies? You know? I'll tell you what. Obviously, not only do people know we didn't work on those issues in the private sector, but no one has done more to go after the opiate epidemic. Suing going after entities $78 million in damages from the pharmaceutical companies. Recently, we just went after the DEA because that federal government agency had been blanketing the state. They were rubber stamping the applications coming in, flooding West Virginia with pills. We went after it. We're putting an end to that. Education in the schools, and obviously, we're going after treatment as well because we have to address people's needs in their heads and their hearts. I'll conclude on this note. All of us, including me and my family, we've seen issues with addiction. There's no one here tonight that hasn't felt it. And for someone like Evan Jenkins to cheapen the political dialogue, to say things that are not true, to hide his deep liberal background, I think is very sad. Mr. Morrissey, I understand what you're saying there, but as Attorney General, you did sue this major pill distributor. But at the very same time, your wife was lobbying for that pill distributor. Is that not a conflict of interest? No. Look, we have handled everything exactly right, and I think most people around the state would say we've been more effective taking on the opiate epidemic than anyone. I would note when I got into office, there was no substance abuse fighting unit in the state. So we've turned things around. The other point, which is important, you cited it. The statistics from 2007 to 2012, well, look, Joe Manchin was on the watch as governor. He was sleeping at the switch when pills were flooding into our state, and it took me and the AG's office to go after that aggressively. Hey, Brett. I'm going to get Mr. Blankenship in. When he came into office, Cardinal Health paid for his inaugural party. They were so happy that Patrick Morrissey had won the attorney general. They knew they had a friend. All right, quickly, Mr. Morrissey, return your inaugural party. Return the money. He has a pain pain pill pill pledge. He has a pain pill pledge that's a fraud because he's taken tens of thousands of dollars that he won't return. So this is what we call hypocrisy. And Evan, I wish you would stop. Let's uh, get uh, Mr. Blankenship in here. So you have talked tough on opioids. In fact, I'd like to address some of what they said. You will. Let me ask you the question, then you can. 
in fact, you want to drug test everyone from lawmakers to teachers. What about the other side of this issue? Do you have empathy for addicts? Well, I, I don't think empathy is going to fix the problem. I think if we stop the drug abuse, we don't need to have empathy, and that's more important. But let me say again that Patrick said he's the only conservative up here. I've already explained that neither one of them would be up here without me. And both of them are misleading. The, uh, Patrick Morrissey came to West Virginia in 2012. He's been here six years. Drug abuse deaths have gone up 63 percent and are continuing to be on the rise. They're up 500 and some percent since Evan first went to Charleston. They like to talk about endorsements. Most of Patrick Morrissey's endorsements are the same endorsements that Joe Manchin had. You know, the, the conservatives don't go out and take campaign contributions from Planned Parenthood. And conservatives don't uh, accept money from drug companies that are flooding West Virginia with opiates. So I'll leave it with that.